snowing in, right. in um, Indianapolis. Really yeah. nice. I'm in Vermont and there has just not been enough snow for Vermont. And there was a little bit today, but like, come on, more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Glennis, do you know how to raise your Zoom hand? I'm going to raise mine and it just pushed me up on the grid and I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. But the crazy thing, yeah, the crazy thing is that it will probably un unraise your hand at some point. And if it does, and if you catch it, re-raise it, but if not, don't worry about it. But it, it keeps you up high in the grid and that's good. I'm going to spotlight myself really fast while, um, while I do a little screen share and do a little intro. Um, and then I'll, we'll hand it over to... Oops. Oh, fudge sickles. There it is. Oh, wait. Hang on. I'm going to go back to, um, sorry, I'm going to go back to recording. Now I'm going to share my screen. We'll try that again. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, it's Friday Night Comics. It's Friday night here. We're on the eastern coast of the United States where it's snowing in some places, but not enough. <laughs> but it might be Saturday morning where you are. If you're if you're in Australia or New Zealand, it might be early. If you're in California or West Coast America, and it might be super late at night wherever you are, maybe in across the Atlantic. Anyway, we're really glad to do this every Friday night. Um, so we call it the Friday Night Comic Workshops. We believe in comics here at the Sequential Artist Workshop, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, we have lots of courses for you at learn.sawcomics.org. Um, some these are some of the ones coming up next. Um, Digital tricks with Donna Dracunas on Procreate and and uh, the other one, <laughs> I forget what it's called. Anyway, hidden history of comics, which is mostly lecture and conversation with Rob Clow, and a guide to freelancing with Jess Relifson, and a reading with Yanni Cooper on Emily Carroll's books. And next week. E. Joy Mayer is here. We're going to be drawing action figures, drawing ourselves as action figures. Um, we're doing a podcast. We're on episode five now. It's called The Terrible Anvil. Look for that on your um, podcasting app. It's just Rolison and I trying to help people learn how to make comics and not feel lousy all the time. That's our tagline. Um, and uh, Saw survives from tuitions and donations, especially when you donate to things like this particular workshop. Um, there's also lots of other ways to support us on PayPal and Patreon and things like that. And we really appreciate it. That's we're, we're a shoestring sort of operation, but it really helps when you can kick in and appreciate it. Um, you can also become a sustaining donor. Um, so for this evening, please no inappropriate speech or imagery, no trolling hate speech. Please keep it PG-13, at least when you're sharing. Um, please share what you do tonight on social media. Friday Night Comics uh, is the hashtag we use. You can tag us at Comics Workshop. I'll put Glynis's tag sign or whatever it's called in the comments um and you can find us at members.sawcomics.org for sharing in our public network also some of you know we've been doing weekly pdfs of anyone who uploads something so if you check the chat i'll put those those links in the chat last week we did the sarah Varen pdf there's a few pages from it and oh. um we'll do one tonight too Drawing to discover your world. And it's Glennis Fox. Oh my God. And I don't have my copy of Persephone's Garden in my hands. It's like one room away, but it's like one of my favorite reads right now. So I really want to thank you, Glennis, for being here. Enjoy everybody. I'm going to stop sharing. How do I do that? There it is. Um, I'm going to spot like Glennis. There we go. Um, and yeah, so thank you for being here. You've got so many marvelous books out and so you've done so much great work. And and um, and I, I just love Persephone's Garden. But anyway, I want to get just started <laughs> so so i'm here i'm here to help in the chat i'll summarize what you're doing i'll be typing a lot of what you're saying in the chat and but um otherwise guide us through what you'd like to guide us through today and i'm wondering what drawing to discover your world is oh look you're right into the screen sharing great i am right in it straight <laughs> over to the straight over to pictures um well i thought i would talk a bit about me before we start not too long but um in order to tell you about how I got to this uh, idea for what we're going to draw this evening. Um, so here are four recent books from pre-pandemic times, and all of them have to do with place in some way or another. Wait, I'm going to I'm going to actually make the slideshow go, which I will do from here. 
Right, okay. Um, and then uh, I published these two books on the island of Cyprus uh, in 2001 that are about the archeology span of the island. It was a result of a Fulbright project, which I felt very lucky to do. Um, uh, I think there's something about traveling that causes you to notice things in a different way. For example, I noticed in this drawing that uh, I could see paintings on ancient pots that were the same creature that was on the menu at the at the taverna. So you can actually eat the um, the iconography. Uh, this being in Cyprus allowed me to travel. So this is a very glamorous picture of of um, the Syrian site of Palmyra. Uh, and I traveled as an archeological illustrator. Here's an image of my desk from the site of Cancreae, which is the Eastern port of Corinth, the uh, uh, Corinth where St. Paul came to preach to the Corinthians is the port that he would have sailed into. So for a lot of years, um, maybe starting in 2006, something like that, I've gone back to this site and worked and um, to draw artifacts that they've discovered in the town and in uh, tombs. So you, so including this uh, amphora handle. So this is my profile meister that helps draw the pots and one of the actual amphoras that would have carried, I don't know, wine or olive oil. And you can see my, um, these are very technical, non-creative drawings and they're not comics, but I'm showing them here because doing this kind of work of drawing artifacts has given me a real sense of, of the connection between people and the things that they make in the landscape and how these things really add a, a depth of meaning and experience to life, I feel like, and how better to express that than through comics. Um, uh, people always ask, why do you draw these things? Aren't they all photographed? And yes, they definitely are all photographed, but there are certain things that drawing can bring out in artifacts and of course life that don't show up in photographs. For example, these are two fragments of a glass bottle that would have held maybe perfume, I don't know, probably found in one of these tombs. These are about 2000 years old. And you can tell that they are, they, it, you can't tell that they're necessarily from the same little bottle, but you can tell from these what type of uh, bottle this was and that they could have fit together because I measured the diameter and it worked out. So things like this that are, um, this is why there's such a job as archeological illustration. Um, but act, uh, I, I've had a, a um, sometimes, um, rocky relationship with the job, but it has generated a lot of comics, including this, um, this was my first autobiographical work about um, my first trip to Greece and sort of waking up to the idea of archaeology. I'm not going to read these because it's, that's just silly, but they're, there, there was about drawing that Greek bus and this specific cavern that my friend and I wandered down and missed the bus and adventures resulted. Um, mm -hmm. And more recent, well, not really. This is from 2017, I think, um, where I kept track of, of daily life working on the dig and here I am complaining about it. Um, and things that I saw that were remarkable about being in that place. For example, this lightning strike or these dogs that would not let me walk anywhere. Um, Tom mentioned very kindly this book, Persephone's Garden. It's a collection of comics over about seven years and a lot of them had to do with my family as well as archeology. span And so this is a drawing of my the house where I grew up, the garden that my mom kept, and another monument of the house, the picture wall that my mom had put together. And uh, this is a comic about wanting to 
hold on to memories and keep time from passing, but it's impossible, of course. Um, also, well, in 2019, I published this book about Charlotte Bronte, and there's, um, to do this project, I had to draw, a, I, I really wanted it to be about their place, where they were, where they spent time. And so here's some reference photos and my drawing. Um, this takes place in a school in Belgium that has been since been destroyed, and there's only uh, a few pictures left, but I made use of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and just showing different reference images and how important this house where they grew up that was very isolated uh, um, from the town. Uh, I drew that over and over for, to, to capture the spirit of the place for this book. All mm -hmm. right, so this one is coming out in April 2019. 2024 what year is it it's 2024 this is coming out in a few months um i've spent the last few years working on this it um is about the late bronze age eastern mediterranean and allowed me to b draw both um fantastic places that i that that i imagined and um places that are real for example uh this site in um, is the site of Ugarit on the western coast of Syria. And I was able to visit in 20, um, or 2001 when it was very quiet before the war. I feel very lucky for that. But there's also a lot of pictures of places of, of this place on the internet. So I wanted to start this the chapter of this book with an image of a site as it is now in absolute ruins and an image of what it would have looked like at the height of its power. And um, that's it. Wow. And so let's now um, leading to a drawing for this evening. Uh, a lot of my comics I realized have begun with thinking about the place where I live, thinking of, so all of you, can do that. Think of walks you take frequently or that you've taken in the past. What things do you see along the way? For example, buildings or monuments or trees or anything else. This is from a comic from 2014 about Woods Hole, Massachusetts, where my husband grew up. He grew up in these um, the upstairs apartment in that middle building. And so I wanted to, I made this really tiny comic exploring the the town where he grew up. But now all of you, you could write down maybe three or five walks that you remember. Maybe it's something that you do every day if you have a dog that you walk or if you're walking to school or the store or to work or uh, just for fun, a park. Okay, so we should take like a minute for that or something and write yeah. down maybe two minutes or something. All right. Yeah. So I put that in the chat. Great. Think of walks you take frequently or walks you've taken in the past. List three yeah. or five walks. Yeah. It doesn't have to be where you are now, mm -hmm. but um, it. I find that I, like things come to mind that I'm, you know, if I see them often. Are we ready for the next slide? No, give us a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Not, you know, not too long, but one minute to write down our walks and stuff. Okay, you tell me. All right. Um, buildings, monuments. Oh, um, I also was thinking, um, but nothing too big. Like if you chose like the Capitol in Washington, D.C. Um, or like the Parthenon, you could write an entire book about that. I'm thinking of things that are um, are um, much smaller, or you know, it doesn't have to be. I don't know. This is this is absolutely up to you. But also trees, plants. Um, it could even be animals. Like one time um, outside of SPX, my pal Summer and I came across a praying mantis, like right outside of the hotel, and I've mm. always thought that that little guy would um, like, I'd like to find out how he got there or, or she or it, whatever. 
Um, how did it end up there? So it, it, this, this is, um, we can define this as you will. Oh, and um, wow, yeah, praying mantis. <laughs> They're very territorial, right? Or they stay in one spot. <laughs> that ter that that praying mantis has got control of that Marriott. Like, <laughs> he was checking IDs at the door. <laughs> All right. Do you want to show us to the next slide? Yeah. So choose one of these walks and one building or monument or thing that you noticed and that you're curious about. This this and this picture is from another comic that I did in maybe um 2017 or 18 about the walled city of nicosia it was for an anthology of that i i can't remember but explaining to my daughter what um why we had to go through a international checkpoint to like go across town mm. yes Okay, are we ready? I don't know, I'm reading this slide. So actually give us a little context that that city is inside of, it, it it's Greece, is, Cyprus and uh, Greece or Cyprus and Turkey. Who's fighting over, who's fighting over this, I forget. So the island of Cyprus is divided. It has it has a, an, a border that, that is, um, uh, a line of barbed wire down across the island, and it it um um. Let's see. I've always wanted to do a comic that's longer about this, but <laughs> I, is this this might be in in Persephone's garden actually, but the context is um as a result of the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in in um 1974, they divided the city and shut down the made it impossible for anyone to cross um, Cypriots. It's since opened up the border, mm -hmm. um, but it's a very fraught border for a peaceful island. Okay, so it's okay. So it's Turkey and Greece. Um, Gail asks, should this be a thing that we don't know about, the thing that we're curious about? Well, should it be something let's keep, let's, let's go on to the next one because then we'll okay. see. We'll see. Um, this I imagine as a six panel comic, but I know from, um, I know that everyone has their own way of doing things. So feel free to do what you want. This is um, draw the monument and building or thing and put yourself in the picture. Here's an example from another, like this is a massive monument, Mount St. Helens that erupted when I was 11. Um, but to answer, uh, answer that, um, you the next step is to do research about it. So if you know already about this, then it's a chance to tell its story. So it mm -hmm. could be something you find out tonight, or it can be something that you want to share with other people, a story of of uh, of a thing that you notice. So if we're going to do six panels in the amount of time we have, though, we should probably keep it to about three or four minutes per panel. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll I'll push people along, and in three minutes I'll say, okay, on to panel two. But I see that you've got some ideas for. Yeah. For so I th I think it's maybe it's it's um helpful to to I put these all in one slide, which is like a lot of text in your face. I'm sorry about that, but I thought mm -hmm. if if it's <laughs> you can it's all in one place, so. Search the internet for information about this thing. How old is it? Has it changed over time? Draw the thing again at some point in the past. And then three, four, five, or however it turns out, tell this a story about the thing. How did it get there? What was its original purpose if it had one? How has it changed? How has the neighborhood changed around it? What is or was its role in the community and in your life? That's one of the things that I thought of was the chimney at my old grade school in Portland, Oregon. That's really tall and it was a chimney, but now it's a place where Swifts live. So huh. all the Swifts swirl down into it at night. 
and um, they can't use that boiler, I guess. <laughs> wow. um, That's related to what I was going to do, which is there's a a fountain on my daughter's um, elementary school grounds. In fact, I didn't even realize it was a fountain till last week when one of the other grownups there said, don't climb on the fountain or something like that. I thought it was just this concrete slab, but then they pointed out that it had all these um, all these little holes for water. So I think I'm going to do tiny, in the amount of time we have, I'm going to see if I can find a little bit of research on it, but otherwise I'll probably wind up drawing sitting on it and running on it and yeah. actually um i i could um if if you've got all of this in the chat i could switch over to draw that'd be would fantastic that i do have that in the chat that would be wonderful we'd love that okay um just before before i unshare draw the thing again perhaps from another angle or closer in and include yourself. How has your view changed or not changed? Um, already, Tom, your idea about what that thing was changed when someone said that's a fountain. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also, I also thought I would do a fountain. Are you? Are you? Do you have all this? Um, can I change the slide or or not? Totally, that's in the chat already. Okay. And if anyone, else, I'll repaste it. Mm -hmm. There is this fountain right near where I grew up called, it's a horse trough oh. fountain. And there I looked, I found it on Wikipedia. Uh, there's <laughs> information about it. Um, but it meant a lot to me growing up. There's me and my um, childhood friend, Chloe Sherman, inside the fountain. So huh. probably from 1982 <laughs> or something. <laughs> All right. That's, that's, awesome. that's a preview of what I'm going to do. Okay. Well, uh, um, um, um. <laughs> what a cool image. Okay. I'm stopping share and then maybe I can, um, what happens if I do this? Actually, um, I can't see myself, so I'm somewhere. What does that look like, Tom? Uh oh, I see. Let me hang on. I'll spotlight. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Um, do you see it? Yeah. It looks maybe upside down. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Oh, look at that. Yay, comics. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay, it's seven to um, eight. Um so Three. Well, according to my clock. Oh, you're drawing fast. Even your lines are fast. <laughs> Ooh, you gotta be you gotta be so quick with with uh with this. Yeah. Okay, so um I think people have probably already begun, um mm -hmm. obviously. Um There's my there's my fountain. Wow, that was fast. I looked down and then suddenly there was a fountain on that page. I can't I can't reach the the drink. Hmm.
this is probably too far away to see, I realize. Nope. No, we can see it okay. Maybe not read all the words, but we can certainly yeah. see the words and the... Um... That's great. <laughs> says, hey, my turn. That I can read, but after that, I have to squint. Let me look. Okay. Uh, Portland. I visit Portland. <laughs> anyway, that's okay. It's fun to watch you, John. You can you can show us. Boy, you draw fast, Glennis. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, fast. Do you draw this fast? Um, I assume it's a lot more. You know, you have to be careful when you're drawing these archaeological drawings. <laughs> I can I can uh, whip out like ten pots an hour, <laughs> but you're there for like six months at a time. I would think. Uh, not not that was in the old days. Now it's like a, a um, two weeks max. I can't leave the family for so long. Oh. Um, I saw this massive. This uh, article just a day or two ago about this massive, beautiful um, set of mosaics and other thing that they found under a hotel just recently in Turkey. In, in oh, Insta yeah. Wow. Istanbul. Blew my mind, the, the photos of it. Because it was still under the hotel. <laughs> and they, isn't I that, guess they could. Isn't that amazing last... that, uh, I mean, how much stuff could be under anything that, um, um in in formerly pop really populated areas okay um here's the second function of this fountain is uh squirting um friends in as they're trying to uh get get control of the fountain in order to squirt back and squirt passing cars and is this the drawing in the past you told us in panel two you yeah. draw that and, but at some point in the past, uh huh. Yeah. Oh, now I can read it for some reason. Whenever I visit Portland, I drink from the fountain on my street. When I was little, we used to spray each other and passing car. <laughs> wow, that's some fountain. It was, it's, it's powerful. It can reach all the way across the street. And oh it, God. and um, if you, if you want to, and it's, it's really hard to wrestle the, um, the, the, the drinking part away from another kid. <laughs> you have to work out really. Um, so uh, I found out from that um, Wikipedia page about this fountain that apparently um, school kids in the neighborhood collected money to, to um, make this fountain because um, it, it is a horse trough and it's for horses that would haul heavy loads up the hill um, to their neighborhood and they felt sorry for the poor thirsty horses. And um, I don't know what the evidence is for this, but it's kind of, it's, it's kind of sweet that kids would notice um, yeah. a thirsty horse. When um, when was that? Well, the the houses in this neighborhood. I've drawn a lot more donkeys than horses, so um, <laughs> um, around the uh, my parents' house was built in 1907. So houses around there were our our turn of the, the last century. I also know mm. that horses don't stick their tongues out when they're thirsty, right? I don't know. <laughs> Man, how many years of art school and this is the horse I get? <laughs> I think uh, it's interesting to think of an, a neighborhood where um, um, that where horses used to be so common that kids would want to have a fountain for them. 
Yeah. I think the fountain I'm looking for is less storied. I'm not <laughs> finding any of it. Maybe maybe this was like an ice truck or uh, like the horse was pulling um, um, ice for for the houses and the and the kids wanted to make ice cream so they um, mm. um, they they didn't want the the ice carrying um, uh, horse to be without. So it wasn't about the horses, it was about the ice cream. Or... <laughs> I'm just, well, I'm just, um, uh, I'm retrofitting a motivation. <laughs> the, the kids I knew in the neighborhood wouldn't, it seems like um, they would have had other things on their minds. <laughs> like, like, like uh, the ice cream truck. And you said the kids saved up their money to to buy to... that's what that's what Wikipedia says. I don't know where that's from. Wow. Uh, next time I'm back, i'll I'll raid the archives of the um, Oregon Historical Society. But, um, I could have I could have added that onto this, but it might be too late. Anyway, hey, how's our time doing? It's thirty two minutes after after you're on panel four, and you are working very quickly. And I think you're a good model for us to be working as quickly. Um, usually, I say if we start sharing. No later than a quarter of we're in really good we're in good shape, but mm -hmm. even even in even in um at twenty of would be good too, and you're so quick. look at this <laughs> Wow, now I know why you do so many diary comics and how you can get them done while being so busy with so much other stuff. I'm like uh -huh. I'm just very sorry. I'm just a very slow cartoonist. In fact, I'm not even drawing it at this very moment. I'm just watching you draw. Um, and it's still a functioning fountain right now? Yeah. Awesome. It it When it's really cold there, it turns off. Um, and that's sad. But it's what's really fun is when it ices over because the, the trough part um is smashing that with a rock is really satisfying as you can <laughs> guess yeah i'm gonna have to do more work to find evidence about my fountain i, I don't think the internet's I'll, gonna i'll be so curious to to um hear what people have drawn i'm yeah i'm so um yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I really, um, I'm interested in in things that are in our in our worlds, and all of you have. I'm just, I'll be curious to see what you're drawing. So panel five says no one knows. I'll let you finish. Um, I'm says they have a certain similar fountain in southern Vermont on a country road. It's called Barna Clark after the man who built it because he was tired of too many horses dying at the peak of the mountain road. Wow. Wow. That's water amazing. from it. It's incredible. The fountain is 150 years old. Wow. Tired of horses dying at the peak. 
Wow. <laughs> I'll ask people to get ready to share, even if it's a panel or two. If oh wait, and what was panel six? Your your request for panel that six. That is back what to um, showing this thing with yourself, mm -hmm. and um... I I have it here. Draw the thing again, perhaps from another angle or closer in, and again include yourself. How have you changed or not changed? Oh, interesting. And Glennis, you were more of an art major in your in your college days rather than an archaeology major, or did you? Yeah, develop? I never studied archaeology except in um, in during my MFA program. Um, I took archaeology classes, and that set me off. So mm. it, it was, I yeah, art school. I have an idea. I don't know if it'll work. <laughs> look at that. Does that look like a horse shaking its head? Sure. <laughs> the the things you never know that you're gonna be drawing, right? Oh, and somebody is sharing in the chat a first-person account on the border of Nicosia. Oh, really? From a podcast. Ah, oh, great! Yeah. Oh, I'll, I will, I will, I'll click that. Okay. It's <laughs> just that stream of water it's so cold and it's not very often that it it um is warm enough to submerge yourself in um ice cold uh water although you know like people people are swimming in lake champlain now so 
Uh, it's really good for you. Let's see, I'm going to post. Oops. Oh, look at that. Somebody sitting in that fountain. And you can get <laughs> those, those dogs. And Susanna is talking about in the chat, she's not working on a, a place, but actually a a button that says welcome home hostages from the uh, uh yes interesting oh this in, is a really in interesting story oh look sarah varen is in sarah oh. you wrote that just to me there we go i had she says i love this prompt hi hi bye sarah thanks for coming <laughs> um so, and let's look at your fifth and sixth panel, Glennis. It says, no one knows Wikipedia, <laughs> whom the fountain was, who involved, in, installed the fountain, but it was local sc school children who raised money for it to be built for poor thirsty horses. And that horse is having a great time there. How many thirsty horses and dogs have drunk from this 150 year old block of granite? And that kid is <laughs> sitting inside of it. That dog is totally enjoying it. Really wonderful. Um, I'm, I think it makes I would, me wonder is granite? Yeah. granite that's is what granite? Wikipedia like granite said. Is... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um maybe, should I should says... I um unshare and let's let people share now? Leave that up until someone comes on and then I'll replace the spotlight. So if anyone is interested um in sharing, if you're if you're ready, go ahead and raise your zoom hand and then we'll we'll spotlight you. Since it was six panels, people might be a little, uh, they might still be working, I think. Um, oh, all right. Nancy is coming on. All right. So we'll start with Nancy. Nancy, I'll ask you to unmute. And anyone else who's interested in sharing, Glynis and I and everyone else, we'd love to hear about some of the places you've seen and some of the, some of the things around. Um, here we go. Nancy, we'll start with you. Making myself. <clears throat> Okay, I, I hope you can see this. Um, so um, I live in Alameda and I live right on the shoreline. So that walk is something I do very frequently right in front of my house. And there's a couple of benches there and they're of different quality of how great they are to sit on. And this is the best bench. So that's me sitting on the best bench, looking at the water. And um, I was thinking there's no, there's no uh, like real history. I was thinking to myself, oh, there's no history behind this. And then I thought, oh yes, there is. There's lots of city council meetings. So here's a city council meeting where they're all arguing. And one says, we need the bike lane. And the other one says, no, the bike lane makes the street too, too narrow, which is kind of both are true. And then here's one, because they also have an area right in front of this bench that's cordoned off when the snowy plovers uh, want to have their nest. Yeah. So somebody's saying, save the snowy plover. And then this other guy, if you excuse my language, he's saying, fuck the snowy plovers. Because one time I one time I told some guy he shouldn't be walking straight through the snowy plover nests, and he just went, uh. <laughs> so, and then this one is when I moved to Alameda in 2005, and it was so peaceful. Here's me and my ex-boyfriend, a bunch of snowy plovers with little hearts on their face, nobody else on the beach. Then I retired in 2017, and so I, there were these things that I wanted to do immediately. So the next year in 2018, I got the condo painted, and while you know I got kicked out of the house for the day when he was painting, I went down to the beach and read War and Peace. So here I am on the beach reading War and Peace, and he said, I say, I wonder, how Mike's doing with that paint job. Oh, and then also up here, there's this hideous, if anybody knows Alameda, along the path near the perfect bench is a house this color. 
it's really <laughs> not terribly attractive in my opinion, but it's a nice landmark. And then down here, 2022, during the pandemic, the world discovered this beach because it was one of the few places that was open during the pandemic. So now it's kind of like this volleyball, those wagons that people bring with all their stuff. And then the last one, I, this happened the other day. I'm walking past the perfect bench with my friend and we say, hey, those two old guys who are probably younger than us, those two old guys have taken over our bench and then I have interesting smell as they're smoking on the bench. The end. <laughs> I, I love that. The, <laughs> the council meeting and oh my gosh. So does anyone, if anyone in the chat knows that bench or that colored house, let, <laughs> let us know. Or any of these things in Alameda. Nancy, I wanted to ask you, you made it sound like you read War and Peace in one day on the beach. Is that? Oh, no, I didn't read it in one, oh. beat, one, one day, <laughs> but I read it over the time, a relatively short time, like a few weeks. For me, it takes me forever to settle down and read something. But I did read War and Peace while the guy was painting the condo. It took a long time. Maybe the bench helped. It yeah. could have. I think I had the little... Um, the little lawn chair thing at that point, but the little lawn chair is probably 35 years old and it it disintegrated at one point. So I don't have it anymore. It, it really did disintegrate. Awesome. <laughs> Objects certainly have stories. Awesome. Thank you, Nancy. We'll go sure, to Walter next. You. Nina, then Eileen. Here we go. I think it would be easiest if I uh, just read this. Uh, in Bellingham, my wife and I often walk the trail through the water treatment plant grounds at Post Point. One protected stand of trees housed a blue heron rookery. The herons came after being displaced from a nearby ridge. To their credit, local government has protected this colony for 20 years. It's mm. a great addition to the walk, especially in chick season. Right. Maybe heron chicks. There, I, I saw, I've seen one once. It's so impressive, and they look like dinosaurs. Yes, um, that was such a nice, that comic, very straightforward and clear. Really enjoyable. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Walter. We'll go to Nina next. Let's see. All right. Am I okay? Am I? I'm, I'm unmuted. Um, this was yeah. hard to do all in such a short time, and um, of course, I gonna have to read this. We're gonna go from birds to fish. Um, I live on Lummi Island in the San Juan Islands in Washington, where we have one of the last, actually the last, reef net salmon fishery in the world. So in the first panel, I said on Lummi Island, the seawall is covered with graffiti, but there used to be a fish trap, and I'm I'm wondering if the salmon are running. And then in the second panel, this is also where reef net fishing started. First, the Lummi Nation used canoes, then islanders used barges, and you have an artificial reef strung between towers and spotters looking for the salmon. So they looked for salmon swimming over the net, an artificial reef, and pulled them in. Salmon were plentiful. And then in the third panel, there used to be dozens of rows of these gear and there were um, many canneries. This is all around the bay. And then in the fourth panel, there used to be so many salmon, they said you could walk over the water on their backs. Wow. And then in the fifth panel, but now, but they overfished the salmon and now the canneries are ruins. And we do, we have ruins of cannery there. And then the last panel, there are only about six gear left, but I'm lucky to know some of the folks who fish. And in the summer, I can walk over and buy the best salmon on the planet. Wow. That's what I did. Thank you. Wow. That's the really depth amazing. of that story, the history of the place, how and it's changed so much. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of history there. Thanks so Thank much, Nina. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm going to Eileen next. Okay. Hi. Hi, Glennis. It's Eileen from the Litfest. Um, I know. It's so nice to see you. I know. And um, 
this is a great um exercise. So I decided to blend the six panels and uh, oh, yeah. And so on the way to South Pond, this um lake in my neighborhood, I do pass by Barna Clark, a friend to all. It's the same fountain like the one you have where um they were tired of horses um you know passing out and dying um up on Ames Hill. So um and the water's still really fresh. So um, you get up to this um, lake and that I'm so lucky to have access to and I walk around it year round and I, it's kind of more of a summer place. Um, one of the things you encounter around South Pond, I've been lucky enough to see like a, a bald eagle grab some fish out of the lake and, you know, you see a lot of wildlife. Um, there's these cabins. And I used to be lucky enough to have access to them because my friend um, rented them for five years and then it... Uh, sad story but they're just not available to us anymore it was like an adult playground but so part of your um exercise was thinking about them in the past or getting some research on them and i used to be really fascinated with them so i already found out that um this panel down here um they used it used to be what a classic like 1970s summer camp and it burned down and so these are the only remaining cabins and if something happens to these cabins they'll never rebuild them and um so they're just like these really nice summery places and um i still get to see them on my walks up at south pond mm -hmm. thanks a lot wow the sort of remnants of a lost world yeah 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 because really, yeah, you can still see some evidence uh, around the pond of of the camp it was a classic camp with like horseback riding and archery and all that kind of stuff so yeah you but these are the last whole cabin somehow they didn't burn down and I'd, i would like to get more of the story about how the fire started and all that yeah <laughs> amazing thank you eileen we'll go to joe next and then becky then gabe right now hi everybody so I live in San Francisco, and I was thinking in terms of doing a um, two-century time-lapse of the same spot. Mm. <clears throat> so mm. once upon a time, the San Francisco Peninsula was just a big greenway, with lots of uh, trees and stuff. But uh, because it was a bustling uh, port, uh, the uh, city spread southward to where I am in Glen Park. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, after the uh, uh, gold rush, it was an explosive uh, growth and there were houses all over the hills. Mm. But unfortunately, after 1906, the earthquake and the fire leveled 90% of the city. And over the course of the 20th century, a lot of uh, houses were rebuilt. And today, uh, pulling back for a drone shot. <laughs> We've got my house amidst many other houses, uh, some as close as 12 or 18 inches, but mm. uh, it's still a nice neighborhood. Mm. Wow. Wow. Amazing. That That's great, Joe. Thanks. That reminds me of that Robert Crumb comic of, uh, what is it, A Brief History of America that moves. That's a big influence. I hadn't thought about it right now. Wow. But... <laughs> I was also going to say that um, Virginia Lee Burton um, kids book about a house, a little. Oh house. yes, yeah. She did the, the she did the steam shovel one also. Yes, right? yes. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, also wow. a big influence. Yeah, <laughs> even and before also, I lived in San Francisco. Um, yeah, um, Richard McGuire's book here. Mm. Uh, a comic that has the same view of a corner of a room, but from all different time periods sort of flashing yeah. in. Yeah. Kind of simultaneously. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. I love Go to it. Becky next. Put a few of those things in the chat too. Mm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. so this is also Thanks, um, set in San Francisco. I live in Berkeley. Um, oh. and this, is, this is about the South End Rowing Club. Um, so first I drew our club's logo. And then this is a picture of the South End Rowing Club. Um, and then... I can't read it because it's backwards, but basically you can see it. At first, when I heard about this club, I thought it seemed like a giant schlep. And I did not think I would want to go all the way into San Francisco from Berkeley to go swimming. And then this is like an overview map of the aquatic park cove where we swim. I, um, I cheated. I did eight tunnels, so forgive me. Um, let's see. 
So eventually I decided to give it a try and I really loved it. And I love the sauna. There's going to be some naked boobies in here, but it's not too explicit. Um, and the sauna really became my, my comfort in my home. Um, and now going into San Francisco to swim uh, at the South End Rowing Club has just become such an important ritual and part of my life and such a wonderful uh, community. So I really, I love this place, this building and uh, the water around it and the people who come swim there. So thanks for letting me share. Oh, that's amazing that the, it's a, it's a place and something that you, an activity and a and a sort of change of perspective you go to over and over 1873 wow thanks becky great go to gail next then jim then laura hi um thank you for this i when this workshop started i thought oh my gosh this seems so complicated um but i actually came up with something so um I ride my bicycle to work. I'm a high school teacher and I ride through Van Cortlandt Park in the Bronx every, well, almost every day when I, when I ride. Mm -hmm. um, and I pass this big lake, Van Cortlandt Park Lake. And um, I also, on the way to the lake, I ride underneath this old train trestle that is from an abandoned New York City, uh, New York Central Railroad line that is no, that no longer runs um wow you could find do, did you know that already or did you find that out oh there's websites about it yeah i bet um, yeah. <laughs> before that train uh line was was um constructed there was a creek there uh, a, a brook called tibbetts brook um, and so here I drew Tibbetts Brook before it was paved over to build the railroad and a nearby highway. Um, so um, there are local environmentalists working to daylight Tibbetts Brook, which means um, like unpave over it, because um, that will help mitigate flooding that's been going on in the area. And one of the results of burying a natural body of water is that the land doesn't really want to be land it wants to be water and so every time it rains a lot um, it floods and in the winter it ices over and it's really uh it's really a pain having to ride my bicycle through there because the last couple of days at least um, ever since it snowed on tuesday i have had to get off my bike and walk over the ice mm. um, so anyway, a little bit of uh, Bronx history for you. I really loved everybody. I love learning all these historical things and the way people put themselves into their history story. So this was really great. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you, Gail. Then we go to Jim next. Here we go. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So I went back to the days when I was uh, living as a student in the Olympic Village in Munich. So basically 1976, 97, I, uh, 77, I was living in, in a high rise that was basically prefab pieces of concrete stacked on top of each other. They'd been put there for the, the 72 Olympics. Wow. Um, and right by that was what they call the Trummerberg, which was a hill of World War II debris that had just been sort of shoveled up. And by the time I got there, it was a beautiful park, but it had been a pile of debris. Um, and when I looked out of the, the seventh floor window of my apartment, I could look down on the residences where the terrorists had uh, taken the uh, Israeli uh, Olympic uh, athletes during the 72 Olympics. Um, from that same balcony, uh, I could look around the corner and see the Olympic Stadium where Bayern Munich played. And whenever they scored a goal, I would hear the reverberations coming my way. Uh, in the same kind of way, lying, way, lying in bed at night, these um, you know prefab pieces, I could hear my upstairs neighbor and her boyfriend late at night 
which is not so pleasant. But um, I very much remember that apartment. It's a very small, little modular kind of thing, but had so much going on. And of course, a lot was happening in my life at that point that was memorable. So that's me. Wow. This, this like, like many of these stories, seems like it could be a beginning point to a, a much longer project. Definitely. Yeah. That was great, Jim. Thanks so much. Yes. Um, go to Laura next. Hello. Um, there is a combination pergola, fountain, horse trough on the way to the farmer's market in Chestnut Hill. Um, there aren't too many horses nowadays, but there used to be trolleys. So maybe they were horse-drawn trolleys. Um, there's lots and lots of human foot traffic. So it's nice that there's a bench for people to relax on the way to or from the farmer's market. Um, a mystery to me is this one person who never rests um, on the bench or anywhere else. She's always going up and down the avenue with her grocery cart. Um, a little historic background, Chestnut Hill used to be a town of summer residences for wealthy Philadelphians to escape the heat. And there are creeks nearby, so there were mills as well. And then here I am um, at the farmer's market, where I never do see that lady doing any shopping, but she always has a very full cart. <laughs> I like to do that, just dr drive a little cart around. Yeah, I don't I wish I knew where she was going. And this is the Virginia Lee Burton book. I just happened to Ooh. have. Oh, look at that. It's really good. Recommend. Super oh, cool. Great. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Sarah next, then Edgar, then Christian. A couple more. There we go. Hello. Let's see. So there we are. Um, so when I was a kid, some rich guy from California built an honest to God castle overlooking the bay where I lived. It was across the street from us. So during construction, people from the city gathered at the end of the driveway to gawk until he put up a fence, which blocked our view of the ocean. So, so I couldn't see the ocean anymore. Um, the guy who built it was some kind of NASA engineer who was very insistent that it be called a fortress, not a castle. He was also very insistent that hikers should stay away from the castle, even though he built it right on the East Coast Trail. Every so often I think about that castle and how my parents still own the land across from it. I know I keep saying I'd never want more living space than I need, but wouldn't it be so funny? <laughs> uh, Sarah, you're going to get that castle. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure that like it would be so funny is a uh, is a good justification for a major <laughs> like life financial goal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Noah. Uh, we'll go to Edgar next. Got a few more. Thanks. Well, thank you, Glennis and Tom, uh, for the inspiration and by fortuitous, uh, whatever good fortune, uh, I have something I'm drawing that was inspired in this last week. And let me show it to you. It's called A Short History of Berlief by Edgar Russell J Sr. and Edgar III. Oh. Published by my grandfather in 1955, this booklet has long been out of print. Opening it to the centerfold, I see a map he drew by walking every step of the area. And there you see 35th Street and Western High School and uh, Reservoir Road and Georgetown University and the Convent of the Visitation. And if you're familiar with Washington, D.C., there's Georgetown, which he drew, but I didn't draw it, at Wisconsin <laughs> Avenue. I would walk to 35th and Reservoir Road to get a cherry Coke at Western Pharmacy. <laughs> When I was nine, I created a sculpture I named Stanley, made of blocks of wood, which expressed the anxiety of man. Dr. Elwin, the pharmacist, asked to show it. 
I got my first solo show, which ran for a month. And there's the statue on top of the table near where the medicine pickup. And there's little Edgar uh, admiring Stanley and getting ready to buy a comic book. I actually bought Spider-Man number one off the rack at Western Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Last week, I found a first edition copy of my grandfather's book on eBay and bought it. Here it is. <laughs> oh my god! And uh, I've been asked. To, uh, I, I I've been asked to update it. I'm thinking about it. But thank you all for going on a walk with me, Edgar Farr Russell the Third. So thanks a lot. <laughs> wow! Thanks. That's amazing that it, it coincided with you're getting that book. That's right. And I decided to pull the book out and look at it and the images and everything. So it's a chance to revisit my father and go on lots of different walks. Hmm. Amazing. Thanks, Edgar. Yes. You bet. Um, this That's a good reminder. We'll go to Christian next, but that's a good reminder to share on social media or in any of the locations I just put in the chat. Um, you can upload it many places and tag us you can upload it we'll make a pdf things like that it's in the chat and we'd love to see more of this okay christian do you have a comic to share let's see you can you should be able to unmute let's see if you can do that try it again okay uh so this so is the alpha time, so this is the alpha tower yeah can uh -huh. you see it yeah the Eiffel Tower. Uh, this is me. And I say this. Why does the Alpha Tower is pants? And he said, hey, this is important. This is an important landmark to our country. I won't, I won't have you described it. American swine. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a little bit jazzy. And he says, like, now I can see why the, the, the tower symbolizes the France. They fasten of pants. <laughs> I've always thought it looked like pants too. Uh, <laughs> I felt so alone until seeing that comic. <laughs> Very well done. Thanks, Christian. That's amazing. All right. We'll go to Maria next and then, uh, then our friend. There we go. Hi. This is wonderful. Thank you so much, Glennis and Tom. Okay. Um, sure. Okay. This old school building in Lawncrest is on my walk. I imagine being a teacher at that school. The school is on the grounds of the Trinity Church, which was built in 1698. A convenience store called Royal Farms, wanted to tear the church and school down, say no to Royal Farms. The church and cemetery are on the Philadelphia Register of Historic Places. Hmm. In the cemetery, there is a marker to honor the enslaved people who were buried there in unmarked graves. Hmm. I plan to find out more about this treasure. Thank you so much. This was so really inspired me. Thank you, Linus. Oh, that's that's such an interesting landmark. I really hope you do more. Yes, yeah. I will. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Maria. We'll go to the box that says Bentley Laura. Here we go. I know you were looking for that zoom hand. Do you want to share? You got it ready? You don't want to share? Okay, we'll go back to Glennis then. Wait, you do want to share. <laughs> well, you can't wait. <laughs> Can you unmute? Um, you should be able to unmute. See if you see if your window lets you do that. Um, I'm almost done. I need two more. We'll whatever. go to Chris and come back to you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I too am unfinished, but I'm going to share anyway. <laughs> I only got four panels. Uh, I used to walk through Sather Gate um, at UC Berkeley every day. Um, and it was sort of donated by a benefactor named Jane Sather. 
who was born in what, 1824. Uh, it was completed in 1910. Um, and there's a bunch of different buildings that are there now than used to be. Yeah. Um, and it was, it's one of the things it's known for is the beginning of the free speech movement um, in the sixties. Um, mm. And that I don't have the rest, but I learned some things about Sadler gate. Mm. I spent a summer there walking under that gate, thinking about exactly what you're, you've drawn here, the protests and how it started and how it's going. Yeah. yeah yeah what a great that's such an, a, a fascinating I, I think there's something about a gateway you know like passing from one zone to the other is a, yeah yeah this is a re great really exercise interesting one. thank you awesome. yeah thanks chris um we're gonna let we're gonna let our friend finish as we go to mishka and then we'll come back let's see mishka are you ready there we go more berkeley i'm now. not ready either <laughs> oh, I'm not. I'm not in Berkeley today. Can you hear oh, me? Yeah. I'm in. I'm in the woods. Check it out. Ooh. Berlin. <laughs> no, in the woods. In the woods. Woods. Oh. Can Ooh. you hear me? Yes. Yeah. We can hear you. <laughs> okay. I I didn't finish either, but I um I'm trying to draw about the panalaki that my um aunt moved into back in the seventies. So Panalaki are these prefab houses um, made during the Soviet era in Prague. And oh so because they were all built at once, then um, all the people who moved in were young families. Um, so there were lots of babies. And so my cousin ended up growing up with a bunch of people her same age. There were little playgrounds outside. Um, but I didn't get there until... Um, until the 90s and they had a brand new metro which was such a luxury a new metro stop at the end of the meadow um so the uh, i used to walk this meadow with my cousin when we were um, both 18 but now she's got her own family and i walk it alone but the meadow is unchanged um, and i like to look out the meadow um which is like living in a park so we're in these like you know soviet prefab buildings but we're <laughs> kind of surrounded by nature and that's mm. as far as I got to really awesome. nice really nice yeah. that both of those things can be mm -hmm. right yeah like these paper thin buildings surrounded <laughs> by this beautiful park that's not usual for Panalaki so. thanks Mishka yeah. okay have fun mm -hmm. thank you all right thank you. To our friend. So out there in Minecraft land, I don't know. If, can you hear us? Are you ready? Can you show? All right. You should be able to unmute. Just show us what you got. <laughs> um, so this is my morning schedule. I really don't have that many ideas. But oh. um bring it closer. Turn it, yeah, a little bit. Oh, there we go. A little, yeah, perfect. Yeah, there we go. First at six in the morning, I wake up and I'm obviously not happy, <laughs> grumpy in the morning. And um, then I brush my teeth at 6.15 and I'm gurgling, gurgling. And <laughs> uh, next I eat breakfast and then I pa start packing up to leave for school. And then I'm going to school, you know, arriving. And that's where I left off. Your walk started, your starts the minute you step out of bed. <laughs> keep going. That's terrific. Yeah, keep going. Um, we want to awesome. see. I'm going to bring us back to Glennis. Glennis, thank you so much. What a, what a great gift to let us think about place a little bit and to go back in time a little bit and connect with what some of these things have meant for other people, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, this, you know what, this, this um, exercise, I've done this before at um, the center for cartoon studies and it was a student that graduated in 2020 who came to visit class and we, we figured this, out together um and her name's lisa hook and she's gonna have a book out sometime but i i feel like 
without Lisa, I would never have had this idea. Oh. <laughs> um, well, we're, I'll, we'll look her up. <laughs> we'll have her, yeah. have yeah. her on too as well. But thank you so much. And you're, you're, the, the wisdom that you bring with all that you've done in archaeology and all you've uh, just all the just the the human connections you you have us bring with through granite you know and through girders and other kinds of materials it was really <laughs> terrific I really appreciate it tell us when or how to look for your next book oh um that uh 1177 bc is coming out in april so um I I meant to have a link ready, but I don't. But I could I could get one. Um, it, it's really it, good to to pre order because then people think um, there's interest. In it. Yeah, the pre orders <laughs> sort of matter. You want to put a link in, and then we'll say good night. Um, yes, it's coming up. It's um, the link is with it's through Princeton University Press, but you can get this book from bookshop or order it at your at a at your local bookshop or however you however you um best order books it's always yeah. good to to um get one you, you know contact your local bookstore yeah for but sure here's the book um, uh there we go copy that book. really fast y'all print the, the print. <laughs> and um meanwhile i'll ask everyone to um to unmute and we'll just and we'll say good night and thank you um so yeah thank you so much and uh -huh. we'll look for you and we'll look um we'll look for your book in april maybe we'll see you at, maybe we'll see you at mocha you're gonna be at mocha yes definitely okay. at mocha some, some of us on the northeast i think our minecraft friend wants to show the last panel is that what you want to show uh no um how much will your new comic be Ah. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, it should be subsidized for this. It uh, it's twenty four ninety five. Yeah. Tell your uh, local library to get it, or your local or your school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. It's so worth it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask y'all to unmute and give. Glennis, a, a round of applause. Thank you so much, Glennis. We'll Thank, you. Thank 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 you.